so we got a couple Ned baits up next. A Ned Craw, a Gobi, uh, a Minnow, and a Head to go with it. Is, is that sound? Is that what we got on the list? Does that sound about right? Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's actually a, a, a product uh, family we're really excited about. Um, so when we looked at, you know, the products that currently exist out there in the field of like Ned rigs, um, they're all uh, kind of very abstract and they've taken kind of that approach. And really when you're fishing a Ned rig, they work super well in clear water and they work super well in cold water when fish are kind of sluggish. And you don't really move them a whole lot. Like it's kind of fish get a chance to get a really good look at it. So, um, we just thought that realism was really the it was the right approach to take with this style of bait and so we've worked on a different formulation of plastic now that we're using and it, we call it duratech it's extremely soft extremely durable um it's very buoyant um and it works super well for this application but you know again one of the cool things about like fishing med rigs is a lot of times these fish get really good looks at it and i we, we feel that with something natural when a fish is looking at it and they believe that they are eating the real thing, what they're pulling um, in terms of their experience to make that decision is all the times they've eaten something that they think is the real thing is the real thing and nothing bad happens afterwards. But whenever you know a fish really looks at something and they're like, well, it's not quite the real thing, but it looks like something I should eat and it turns out to be a bad experience, then it's kind of that, that pool of information and experiences that they pull from to kind of encourage them or discourage them from their next, you know, decision to bite something similar. So that's kind of something we focused on um, in general with Savage Gear is let's make products that are realistic. So when a fish is eating a bluegill, when a fish is eating a craw, like they think they're eating the real thing. And so in highly pressured environments or in clear water environments where they really get a good look at the bait, it's kind of like a something that tips the scales to the favor of an angler, especially that's fishing in competitive environments. So this little, this little guy again has all the detail and all the realism of our larger ones you can see the dimpling on the carapace the dimpling on the on the claw and we make it in a lot of really nice colors um so we've kind of uh, stepped up uh what is kind of offered color wise in these small profile baits in our custom plastic formulation and put built a program together so this is the craw and it's the first of our four supernatural looking high detailed net baits in that new material do you have any of the other, the gobies or, or, sorry, go ahead. No, we can talk about the gobies. The other thing that's cool about these is that we, we built in, so it, it was, it took a little bit of time to fine tune, but we worked in the right amount of salt to put in these because the problem with, well, it's not a problem, but one of the characteristics of this Duratec material, it's super buoyant. So as soon as it hits the water, it wants to just stand straight up. And so we used salt as kind of a counterbalance and also scent. So this material doesn't absorb salt super well, but the, the scent is absorbed well with the salt. So we were able to really scent this uh, really well as well. And so now when this floats up, it's a slow, natural float. It's not a shoot straight up, but it still has enough buoyancy to where I feel like this, this is the type of material that has the best results in that sort of application. Because even at a dead standstill, it has this little bit of slow, subtle movement that, that bass key in on and react to. So it's super cool. And this is our goby, like you mentioned. It's got a little split fin in the back. So what that lets you do is it, it gives you a really good place for your hook to kind of come out of and also hide some of the hardware that is, you know, that makes a difference when, pe when fish can really look at what they're eating. So it's got a nice little glide uh, action to it and it's worked super well. And even though it's three and a quarter, uh, two and a quarter inches, excuse me, it has a, a, a lot smaller of a feel because the tentacles really make this feel like a lot smaller of a bait. So for ease of rigging, we made the head of it. Uh, it's not hollow. The, the back of the body is hollow, but the head is full of material. So it really holds onto your hook really well and makes it easy to rig. So we're, we're excited about this one too. This whole net program has been, it's been a good one. Like the feedback that we've gotten from our staff has been great. And uh, I think in general, like all the products you see here, this is the product of like uh, a fishing team that I, I'm extremely thankful for. And, you know, being able to pull resources from, for example, when I'm making some stuff, be able to give Mads a call. If I run into a roadblock, he's been super helpful with a lot of things. So we have a, a great team that facilitates making really cool stuff. And I'm, I'm just grateful to be, you know, in this position to be able to do this. So. Very nice. Do you have any of, of the Ned minnows or the Ned jig heads there to, to show off at all? Yeah, yeah. totally. So um, here's the Ned Minnow, again, out of this super stretchy material, is segmented with a T-tail uh, design. So if you notice on this Ned Minnow, 
it has a little bit of a fin back there and we did this to kind of slow um the swing of the tail so it's a kind of a compact tight swimming action that works really well in um in those cold water environments or those pressured fish environments where like action is probably not extreme action is probably not what you're looking for um but uh, basically this guy is super detailed let me see if i can find one that will show the detail a little better um this guy is super detailed um and it has a cupped face and the cupped face fits the ned jig head really well the other thing that it does it fits a round ball jig head really well so as much as i fish this as a ned rig i also fish this on a round ball jig head all the time because it just it it fits on so nicely and regarding this as a ned bait so whenever you have like a shad die off or any sort of like stunned small bait fish due to temperatures this thing has been absolutely killer um nick smith has done a bunch of fishing um with and testing and and feedback with our uh, net products over in the Delta. And he's he's in love with this bait. So he's super, super stoked whenever uh, mass production comes in and he can fill his boat up to the brim with uh, <laughs> with net baits. So, so you mentioned- But regarding you... your net jig head that you asked yeah. the question of, uh -huh. we have it right here. And there's a couple things about this jig head that are unique compared to some of the other ones out there. So one of the things is that this net jig head has a 60 degree angle on the, on the tie point. And so what that does is it gives it a little bit different of a feel fishing it whenever you're casting and retrieving. So those 90 degree eyes work really well straight up and down. And I feel like 90 degrees eyes are made to be fished straight up and down, which a, a good portion of the Ned market is built that way. But this 60 degree eye gives you a lot different options. One, we feel like when you're casting and retrieving, it, it, it gives it a little bit of more lift and it helps it kind of come through cover well. Also, if you're cast out and there's a little bit of tension on the line, it gives it a little bit better glide. So if you drop it on more slack line, then you get more of your complete vertical drop. And if you drop it a little bit with uh, slight tension on your line, um, it, it'll kind of glide its way down. The other thing that's super unique about this is this hook keeper system. So I don't know if you can see it there, but it's, it's very different from the ones that exist on the market now. And the beauty of this hook keeper is as your plastic comes on, it pushes this pin right here down, and then the pin shoots back up once the plastic has made it through. So in order to pull the plastic off, the act of pulling the plastic off applies pressure on this bend and pushes this pin up. So if you pull on it, it locks the, the bait in plate, place even better. And I'll rig one here just to kind of show that. But, um, and the second thing, if you look at the position of where the hook is relative to the head, the hook is not coming out of the center of, the, of this jig head. It's actually positioned slightly up. And then if you look at this pin, this pin is positioned slightly down. So actually the center of the jig head is the space in between. And what that does is it gives you a little bit more of a clearance, a little bit more of a gap. So when you rig with this jig head, instead of going through the center of the bait, you wanna just move slightly upwards and then push it all the way through and rig like you normally would. And what that does, you see the final product. What that does is now you have a very light wire hook with a little bit extra gap. So a lot of times, um, at least from my experience, like you, you get into fishing net baits and you do really good on the, some of the smaller fish, but for some reason, like fish over five pounds, you tend to lose a few of those from time to time. And um, this extra little bit of gap has really helped kind of kind of improve your ratio on landing some of the bigger fish with this bait. And then again, the hook keeper, if you can see the hook keeper is totally on, I can pull on this like crazy and it doesn't come off at all. And then the nice part about it being separate as well is that if you weld this hook keeper or this bait keeper onto a hook, the heating of the, the carbon steel, the high carbon steel weakens the hook. And when you already have a light wire hook, that's kind of a that's kind of a negative that you don't really want. So by keeping it separate, we don't compromise the integrity of the hook at all. So, and that's that's kind of it. It's still a net, it's still a net jig head, but we just kind of tried to fine tune a couple little details that uh, from feedback from our staff that we that we were able to we feel improve and, and make slightly better for the guys you know out there fishing. Definitely, and we you mentioned the fine details. That seems to be kind of thing we keep going back to with all these products is they really fine-tune the details, very detail specific, and really kind of dialing in the baits. I mean, and, and that's, I mean, like a lot of net baits are just a, a stick. 
Uh, and those are very, the, quite the opposite, very detailed, cool looking baits. So excited to check those out once they do come available. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's about the most unique uh, keeper I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and totally makes sense yeah. uh, on why that's going to work. And, and Jose, like you said, uh, the, the bite of the hook is often a problem with dead baits. So mm -hmm. uh, that, that's a really, really cool idea, positioning the hook higher to give it more bite. Yeah, no, totally. Just one more thing real quick that sure, I think uh, was on the list that we skipped over was the oh. salamander. So the salamander is an ex extremely segmented net lure also that's super detailed. And it kind of is a, a slightly larger offering in that uh, in that program. But again, it's, it's super heavy duty, super resistant to tearing and very soft. And so what kind of is unique about this guy is that salamanders are uh, a forage that uh, that fish tend to bass tend to kill on site because they tend to predate on their uh, bass net on their eggs on the bass eggs so it's something that they see and they just try to take out the other kind of nice thing about this that's that has worked out really well as a as a side application to it is that it because of the how it's balanced with the salt like this drop shot super well and it has a ton of really good movement so if, if underwater what if i put this on a net head and I throw it underwater, I naturally shake a little bit already, but there's no way for me to keep this thing from not moving. Like it just moves really, really well. So Interesting. It's Very another cool, cool little offering. Yeah, it's uh, cool we, we, do, we do have a question before uh, we move on. Uh, do you have to keep these away from other plastics? Will they, will they interact uh, and melt? Yeah. Yeah, they will. They will melt if you store them with other plastics. So definitely um, we built these really nice trays in the package and, you know, we kind of recommend that you uh, that they're stored that way or else they will turn everything into a big puddle. Will be sad. That would not be <laughs> thanks for thanks for the clarification there. I do have yeah, some, yeah. some melty spots on my uh, on my <laughs> boat carpet from just that.